You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, now we're here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Hooked on You, Wraith's Path. So let's just go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. It's been a little while since we played this. Uh, yeah, I'm eager to see where else we go with Wraith. Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. From everything I've found, I think this is the ruins of an ancient cult. They seem to be devoted to some type of sentient evil. Ooh, excuse me. I think they used this island, or maybe the person they worshipped did, and I think they used this ritual site to travel to and from the island. I think they sacrificed people on this torture wall in order to open some portal out of here. Get the wall. You walk over to the wall and examine the chains and locks. Looks like some kind of torture wall. Wow! What happened to people here? Did they keep prisoners? It looks like they were tortured, but what I'm able to dig up, it was something more. Ritualistic. It was serving a larger purpose. I have reason to believe those prisoners weren't alive for long. Do you think the cult of the Black Veil is still around? Are we in danger? Hell no! Maybe. But I have a plan. All we need... And right as you're finally about to get some of that sweet, sweet information you've been lusting after, Claudette and Dwight pop in again. This time they swear it's a good reason. I promise we're not being manipulated this time. Honest! It's time for dinner, you silly gooses. Come get some food. Dwight, for the last time, the plural of goose is geese. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Huh. I must have tracker. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining, and that's not just the remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. No, no, you are really feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry, I'll keep your dirty little secrets. But enough gentle ribbing. It's time to get back to business. All the, uh, <clears throat> appetizing singles have arrived for dinner, including Trickster. Wraith is here, too. And we're not going to do the gag where we cram them all on screen at the same time again, so just believe me, they're all here. They're just as sexy and demented as you remember them. With the love, with your love on the line, everyone is being very careful to not offend you by saying the wrong thing. Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm surprised as you are that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just met them yesterday. However, since Trapper seems like the biggest long shot to end up holding onto your heart, he throws caution to the wind and speaks up. It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least loved killer on Murderer's Island, but hey... Letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is the least we can do, and heaven knows they won't do any better than that. If I'm dining solo, I'm eating what I want, and you're all eating it too. Lamb shank, rare, salt pepper, no sauces allowed. And serve it with one single piece of broccoli so Wraith won't complain. I like broccoli. Gives me horrible gas. Oh, I don't like that. Buddy, wait till you smell what rare lamb does to my pals. <laughs> what? It's awesome. Dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You've had an interesting day, that's for sure. But how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or too little, and it could affect your standing with the group. Hmm. Okay, but don't just sit there saying nothing. Nothing is not an option. Get excited about the hatch. You had a great time. I'm worried. It was fun. We had a great time when we played Constellation Trivia. The whole thing left me starry-eyed. Everyone rolls their eyes. Talk about sexy. No, really, if you're going to tell us a story, talk about something sexy instead of whatever that was. Wraith smiles. You're strangely good at getting him to do that. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now, and they're all very tired. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That's a dreary, dreary supernatural horror thriller set in Antarctica. What a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. Bony appetite? Don't you mean bon? Uh, no, almost everything we serve has a lot of bones in it, even the vegetables. Impossible to avoid on this island. Cat, knock it off! Oh god. Ugh, sorry guys. Everyone eats without speaking. Tensions are rising, both of the sexual and deadly variety. When everyone finishes, Dwight and Claudette come back to clean up the table. They linger around you as they pick up your plate, take your napkin, and dust crumbs off the table. What would you like to say to the servants? Thank them. 
Your top-notch service is much appreciated. Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is going to happen, something that will change everything. You can go willingly or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice. Tough cookies. Did you have a choice on how you said that, dweeb? Yes, and I immediately regret how I did. Good. Something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth. Fire illuminates the soul. Hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. I have pretty sensitive eyes. I'm also horribly afraid of it. The fire, I mean, not my eyes. Because of childhood trauma involving fire. And finally, everyone starts moving towards the fire pit, if only to get away from Wraith's complaining. You take a seat on a comfortable log, filling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for other killers to take their places, wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey! Hey, you think? Are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? Doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but something unexpected happens. Nothing. Uh, nothing happens. Uh, something almost always seems to be happening here. So nothing is probably not a great sign. <laughs> Everyone's like, what the fuck? Oh, cool, and now everyone is looking at you. So, you know, do something. Should I pick uh, someone to tell a story, or we could play charades? A boggle? Um... Um, well, uh, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a, sto us a story? Wraith points a spine and skull staff thingamajig at you. You duck out of its way. Uh, who knows what that thing can do? Probably shoot lasers. Try not to bore us. We're just very interested in you. Don't speak for me, Huntress. Now, you can't tell if you're warm from the fire or if it's your nerves heating up. I know that the fire is right here, but maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and uh, doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Wraith. Neri was about to make an important decision about telling a story or not. Alright, let's tell a story. Sure, I'm game to tell a story. I hope it's a mystery. Uh, okay, so what type of story do you want to tell? Let's do... Uh, Wraith seems like someone who'd be interested in, interested in adventure, maybe. I'm gonna save this right here so I can... Fuck! Well, fuck you, game. Adventure. Alright. You like your Dwayne The Rock Johnson movies? How about some adventure? Now we're talking. It's not my favorite, but I respect your choice and will nod politely. You don't have to say that, Wraith. Just nod politely. Okay, ready? Here goes. I really like to go fishing. Solid hobby. Great foundation for a story, for sure. You pause. Everyone is waiting with bated breath. No pun intended. Oh, wait, that's it? Not much of a story. Barely even a thought. And my pun was better than that story. You sure that's all you have to say? No. No, I was just kidding. So what type of story do you want to tell? Personal. Wraith told something personal. I'm going to tell something I'll get a little personal now, if that's okay. Those types of tales are the best, and often the most sad. It's a bit of a love story. Is it about two strong hunters who meet when they both try to bludgeon the same wily wolverine? Or about a deranged killer who makes the only woman who ever believed in him witness a display of shocking violence? Not quite. It's about my parents. They met at a party in college. He was hosting, and she'd been dragged there by some friends. Oh. They couldn't have been more different, and yet, as the night went on, they were drawn to each other. She made fun of his taste in music, and he took an interest in her major, women's studies. They were married within two months. But too soon to know if you can trust someone, don't you think? It's so sweet! Exactly. I learned a lot about love from them. If, you know, you know. Some people don't need years to get acquainted with someone. Love could spark from a look across a campfire. Now you've got their attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch your eye from across the fire pit. It's quite alarming, actually. Except for Trickster, who has his headphones in and is loudly playing his own music to drown you out. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but this narrator keeps it real. We can't just end here. So, who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? Look from killer to killer, trying to decide who might be the most entertaining. Let's go with Wraith. Well, well, um, I guess if you want, let's see, what story could I tell? 
I can tell you about the one about Mam Mamiwata, a beautiful African sea goddess who would lure men in with, this, with sex and then reveal her true form as half woman, half fish, making them swear to be true to her and no one else. Long story short, it actually ended badly for the men. Which is the end of that story, I guess. My bad. Um, uh, let's see. There's that one about the mysterious cult that would demand a human sacrifice to, uh... No, oh, that's not good. You don't want to hear that one. There's the living tree. Its branches are more like tentacles, and it oozed a strange liquid from its bark. One time a girl and I, one time a girl I knew drank the liquid. She disappeared that night. But a week later, a new tree appeared. It had a very similar, familiar-looking face etched into the bark. Now that's a bad story. That could never happen. Hmm. What about something truly horrifying? One time I was doing my maths, and I mixed up the quadratic equation and the Pythagorean theorem. Just for a second in my mind. But I guess I was tired, but wow. That was really scary. I want to hear more about the half-fish lady, particularly the fish part. It's not just you, Neri. Half the time I have no idea what the hell Trapper is talking about either. When you're hot and rich and extremely scary, you start to think people will just accept whatever you say. Hell of story time. A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think a very, every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm much more of a fan of the episodic style of story storytelling. And knowing it's a series takes a lot of pressure off of any individual installment, and builds a greater sense of community between audience and the creator. Tell me, Neri, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Don't answer that, we actually don't care. We're just here to make sure we see we, that we seamlessly move on to the next segment of the evening. God forbid my small talk get in the way of a romantic Twilight moment. Dwight, I'm gonna need you to shut your yap, your yap trap. You know that we need to get back to that thing we do when, when, whenever we're not on screen? Okay, okay, have fun tonight and try not to wink wink and end up dead. Why did you say the words wink wink out loud and what kind of double entendre are you getting at with the end up dead thing? And Dwight is physically incapable of winking, and not since the accident. And do you know that all these people are despicable criminals with double digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit. Uh, she really doesn't belong here. She's strictly a victim, not a perpetrator. No wonder she's pissed. Did I hear somebody trash-talking Spirit? Deal me in. What do you say we take this talk to the hot tub so I can soak this bod while I roast that ghost with some killer hot takes? <laughs> God, I fucking love the dialogue in this game. Please, enough talk of burns. The things that are lit are getting blazed. It's enough of it's enough that these activities have to be set next to a literal fire. Must it be surrounded by figurative flames as well? What if we turned and ran away from uh, ran far away from this place as we could, just you and me? On those spindly legs, you'd probably tire before you got too far. If it's running away to some place more secluded, Nary is after, they should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. And not that my walk speed really reflects my giant stature, but that's because I choose to move slowly for stealthy reasons. It's my own choice, and it's completely logical. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and creating drama? I'm so over all that. Don't you get it? Society wants to trick you into fighting with each other so that corporations can swoop in and tell you to, and tell you fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. I'll be sitting in the shade and drinking something locally sourced while thumbing through a public... Uh, Public domain novella printed on recycled paper because I refuse to play their game anymore. It's like she's actively trying to be as unappealing as possible. Does it really does it really turn anyone else on or just me? Despite Trapper's uh insatiable appetite, it seems his attention along with every, the attention of everyone else is uh still on you. For the moment. If you could, I don't know, just pick one of us. Maybe we could all move on with our lives, or um, you know, some special projects we might have going. You heard him. Who will it be? Who will you head off for? Who will you head off with for an evening activity? I'm just saying, you may not get a ton of chances to date around like this before your time on Murderer's Island comes to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either, but with this streaming reality TV dating show boom happening, it's pretty much all that wasn't taken. Which killer will you pick? And yes, we're back to excluding Trickster because, ugh, that guy. Wraith, take me away, my love. Wraith? I knew you'd never pick me! Who am I kidding? But I did pick you. Wraith immediately turns and runs away. It's not like he didn't tell you that you, what you were getting into. Well, follow him!
You catch up to Wraith, and as usual, he appears a little anxious. Hey, you seem a little off. What's wrong? Wraith stops and tries not to look at you. After a moment, he relaxes. You can tell, huh? You, uh, you must be getting to know me pretty well. There's that big sigh again. Sorry, sometimes I get, I get too into my head. You nod understandingly. Well, maybe there's some way we can get you out of here. Get you out of there. Bring a frisbee? Yeah, sure. We're on the beach, we can throw around a frisbee. Well, it's dark and I don't really like sports. It's like you know nothing about him. Disappointing there, <laughs> I'll fuck you. But who knows, maybe it'll work. Wraith grabs the frisbee and looks at it like it's a moon's rock or something, and then tosses an absolute bullet right at you. You're so shocked at how absolutely sick that throw was, bro. This dude can really handle. In fact, you're so shocked you duck out of the way of the incoming disc instead of catching it. I thought you weren't good at this. <laughs> well, it's really just the Brunelli principle. The gyroscopic inertia of a spinning disc. He talks at you for about five minutes before running out of steam and realizing you haven't walked off like any normal sane person would have. Wanna throw the frisbee back? I guess so. Suddenly nervous, you clutch the frisbee in more or less the same way. The same way Wraith just taught you about. You aim and fire. It wobbles a little and sails away from Wraith, before catching the breeze and sailing perfectly into his outstretched hand. I crushed it! Uh-oh, Wraith starts to tremble. Crush! No, 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 never again! Can't crush! Uh, hug him? I don't know, maybe touching him is not the best idea. No, because then he'll crush me. Why are you so scared of the word crush? Hearing the word again, he sobs harder. Not grading the reading the reading the room, are you? Through sniffles, he tries to explain. It's the car crusher. I don't want him to. I don't want to go back to the car crusher. Put your hand on his shoulder until he calms down. Wraith turns to you, smiling sheepishly. Wow, this day went by so fast, but I guess it's over. I don't understand. Why is it? You strange, beautiful weirdo. Meh. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was. Oi, feels like I've been here a lot longer than that, than that, actually. It's so late that the sun is already beginning to rise. I better get this over with quickly so that, I mean, I, I mean, you can get some beauty rest. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual narrator narratordom. Good thing you've really used your time well since then. It really getting to know the gang. The brain, the mogul, the basket case, the psychotic bunny girl. You know, the four types of people. <laughs> anyway, everyone is gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who Nary chooses. Who's ready for a round robin? How round are we talking? N no, not to eat, Huntress. Each killer gets two minutes to tell you about the dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, right? Almost like the order does matter. Spirit, why don't you go first? Get this over with, and then you can go back to reading your book. Stop talking. Hit us, Spirit. Figuratively. Damn it, Dwight, you gotta watch your words with these people. Tomorrow you'll spit in the face of God, die, and be reborn anew. That's it. If you're not intrigued by that, I don't want you. Go draw crayon art with Trapper, or dig up whatever mysteries... Mysteries with Wraith. I don't know those types. what those types of guys do all day. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Another event-filled day. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!